Hey yo everyone, uh, this is a Happy Anime Cafe Manager here with another uh, walkthrough episode for the game Phoenix Ride Ace Attorney. Well, uh, I was going to uh, pick up where I uh, left off in this, uh, in, in the original episode, but, uh, my mom came back from where I worked to, too soon, so I gotta help out, help out a little, little so... I have to make sure that no no one else is in the apartment, and so I can uh, record these without being disturbed. Anyway, without further ado, let's see the events unfold. Bailiff, bring out the witness from before, the boat shop caretaker, quickly. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant Miles Edgeworth a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said. Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly, astonishingly so, actually, yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed, Robert Hammond. He asked me to come by to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important. I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, Sir, Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't out of boat shop either. What? What should I do? F find him quickly. We cannot. We cannot allow him to get away. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. December 27, 1.22 p.m. This record defendant lobby number two. Yay, Nick, you did it! Yeah? Well, at least we got out from uh, under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Mom Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on the trial on trial instead of our clients. Hey Edward. Um, Mr. Edward? D did you say something? Don't look so plant pink. I mean, it looks like you're good. probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax! I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. W what do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Ed Edgeworth? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it, to get it off my chest, but, huh? I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Clear, see, 
third seed. Alright, now the last day of the investigation. December 27th, 2.11 p.m. Ryan Company Law Offices. What was Mr. Edwards talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of murder. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he never takes someone's life. Never. Yeah. Yo, how's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swooning in the aisle. Some of my... Uh, the swooning? Me? Oh, oh, yes. I do remember feeling faint. Right on! Tell, tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? H huh? M me? I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you could do better than that. Come on, I think Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy. You guys should be bowing before me! Yeah, bow before your hero! Larry, you really helped out in the trial today. You did it. If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure that Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> but seriously, Nick, that boat shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious, but Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know? But from where I was sitting, Edgy seems pretty... edgy. I mean, can you really know, know he's tell, telling the truth about that night? Nick. Uh, I don't know. But what I do know is, I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edward and who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not... Me? But, but why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? Huh? Enough with the silent treatment. Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when, he, when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when you wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait! Was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me, Miles and Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know? What? Hey, hey, Larry, what's he talking about? Huh? Uh, uh, er, sorry, I kind of forgot. Huh? <laughs> Okay, Dick, out with it. I'm going to hear this story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was in the beginning of spring, fourth grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A c class trial? You remember, Larry, spring, fourth grade? A kid in my class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school is really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch for from home. Huh? I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared with $38 still inside. Oh, yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PE class. I was coming down with a cold, so I skipped PE that day. I was the only one not, not in class. So, they thought you did it. Yeah, the kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day we held a classroom trial with me as the defendant. You know this part, it, they even have this uh, part portrayed in the movie. Uh, I mean, well, the Phoenix and Edgy look, look so cute in the movie. <laughs> Okay, I'll get on with it. 
I, I didn't do it. Guilty, he did it. Guilty, it was you. Thief, give me my money back. You're such a meanie. No one play with him. Just admit you did it. You can't hide the truth. Tell us the truth. We're not going to play with you anymore. Yeah, and no borrowing my eraser. You shouldn't be a real rod and a really rate worth it. Give me back my 50 cents I loaned you. Hey, did you? Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. And he had, even the teacher thought I d done it. Apologize to the class, Phoenix. I, I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad, I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went over the, to where the boy was sitting. That's when it happened. He shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in this trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed, amateurs. M Miles? Huh. It wasn't you who stole my m money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That's why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. But, but Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it. He's the one. We don't need proof. Make him say he's sorry. Why don't you all just shut up? This is always how it is. Everybody ganging up and picking on one person. Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Very well. I will replace the uh, money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were always friends. Wow. I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea either. I mean, I had no idea either. Always get confused either or either. So, excuse my grammar. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Uh, um, yeah, well. I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I had been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So I took a kind of a per so I took it kind of personally, see? When something smells, it's usually the butt. Edgeworth Gold. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after uh, that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when, when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my dad, a famous defense attorney. Then a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DO6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when, when I heard Edward's name again. <laughs> when I heard Edward's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicious of a, of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimony, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. That's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him. I don't know how many times he never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friend. I couldn't just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him and to learn why he had become who he became. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why... That's why you became a defense attorney to meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believe in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edward. I'm the only one who could help him. Whoa, Nick! So this is why you helped me out for free. Uh, yes, I helped you out because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. Oh, Nick! Nick! Nick, we have to save Mr. Edward if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. It very well may be. 
First, there's that round folk shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I settle for who. I guess I could clean out some of this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go. Gore Lake Park entrance. Hey, pal. Long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Close one today, eh? I got so worked up I snapped my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that. No problem, pal. Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have this uh, scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come on, what may? It's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch me a criminal. Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, one other thing. No one can go into the woods today. The woods? Where Lotta was camping? The woods are off limits to camping and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one could go in for a while. I guess Lotta is in a lot of trouble. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Alright, the public beach, huh? The skill, the eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's been too busy with the trial to show up for work. Bolt Rental Shop. That old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Uh -huh. I know that clearing up the throat anywhere. Aha! Uh -huh. Hello. What might you be doing here? Out for a walk? Hmm? Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon. You see. Mr. Grossberg, this is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. Sir, that is true, yes. But from what I saw of today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, -ho! what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, well, well I'm not sure. Mm. If you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be a, to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here anyway? Who knows? Well, into the caretaker's shack. Nobody's home. Hello, hello. Hey, it's Polly. I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello, hello, squad. I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello, hello, squad. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows some number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? 1228, squad. Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Aww. But hey, he keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick, let's see what what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in there is a letter. A letter? Aw, four rings. Hmm, there's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten a very precise, clear letter. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth? N N Nick, why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm going to read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says this is your last chance. Now is your time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letters go to the, describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and Frank Edgeworth. Calling Edgeworth out to take 
to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly why I figured out in court. Figured out today in court. It's all here. In perfect detail. What do you think it means, Nick? Oh no, but it looks like there are these are instructions for the caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edward, he was following instructions. Both could have written that letter. And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edward? Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain, this letter is an amazing clue. Letter from the state. Type documents retrieved at the caretaker's shack. Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick. You probably shouldn't. Just kid, kidnap her. The police know about her anyway. I'm sure they'll do something. Well, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great, now the bird's going to hate me. Well, there's nothing in the woods anyway. December 27th, Detention Center, Visitor's Room. You look as grim as always. <laughs> um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You, you don't remember. No, I don't. Their lunch money was stolen, wasn't it, in fourth grade? Lunch money? Oh, oh, right. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it's probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault even. Well, maybe, yeah, but... I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. Hey, Edgeworth, why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to uh, be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let my self-deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right? But I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes, the man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yon his name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter anyway, way you look at it. Yes, he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day, 15 years ago, the three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxy oxygen deprivation. I'd lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crew, crew of, crook, crew, or, crook, of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. He claimed Yanni Yogi had a dot that had been not a sound of mind due to, due to the oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. Prosecutor Von Karma. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He is a perfectionist in all things. 
in court, his personal life. He is obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved, and not one suspect was declared innocent, ever. But, but that's, I know, it's possible some of these suspects were indeed innocent, however, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is, it is his job, to find a suspect guilty, perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edward, if what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He, he's right! Now's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edward! Huh. It's a strange situation in which I find myself all admit. No kidding. I'm gonna take a look. I'm gonna go to Gro Grossberg for a while. I'm gonna visit Uncle Grossberg. Grossberg Law Offices. He's out. Again. When does he work anyway? Now, now. Don't be harsh. Guess we'll have to come back later. Get your revenge on Miles Edward. This note details of the murder and set up. Edward, see this letter? Hmm? This came out of the safe in the shack where the boat Reynolds caretaker lives. I see. Revenge. On me? Who is that old guy anyway? I... I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant you got declared guilty or something? Nice, right? But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So he was following this letter then. Which means that there was uh, someone else behind it. Now is your time time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men, me, myself, and Robert Thomas. It also says this is your last chance. Last chance. Wait, maybe. Maybe he's talking about the stat statute of limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. W what is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi? The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. Yanni Yogi. Yanni Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in the in that elevator again 15 years ago. The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long it felt like forever. The air thinned and the darkness closed in on us. In that little box, we became Unsettled. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet, you're not making this any easier. I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout, you'll just use up more oxygen. That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in the hospital bed staring up at the ceiling. In court, Yanni Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed that oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court and Yogi was found innocent. Huh? But isn't that strange? This letter he tells him to get revenge on Edward. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. You mean the nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had. 
Well, thanks for watching. Until next time, to be continued, baby.